we have here Gino, you know, in his car looking kind of suspect, like he's stalking somebody with his dick in his hand. <laughs> we have Stealth 718, where, you know, he's looking a little domestic, like a helpless little husband that's just been beaten and battered <laughs> and abused over a, a, a bit of time. Oh, All right, so man. let's get let's get to let's get to the discussions. Um, let's start with the current WWE champions. You know, we're gonna discuss their angles. You know, whether they heal or face, and what we think about it. Let's start with uh, Roman Reigns, Tribal Chief. Roman, I mean, Roman. Roman to me is an interesting figure. Like honestly. To tell you the truth, I think this is his best work since the the Shield, since they first got together. Like, remember when the Shield came up and they were beating on everybody? They were doing yeah. fabulous work. I think this is along the lines of his best work, along with that time and and well, that place in time. Um, Roman Roman is a strong champion. He has he also got um he also got a a strong mouthpiece. Um, but. It, it seems kind of weird with um with his championship run, and because it's like he wants to be face, but he's trying to play heel. It's like he's trying to go in between. Honestly, I think he should just go full force heel, just forget about being cheered, just go kick ass, and that's it. He should just go straight on being heel. That's that's my vision for Roman. Roman should just not try to be a tweener. Um, just do heel shit. And what do you think, Stealth? From every, from every wrestler that I see, that uh, was a, a a baby face to a heel, they always, all of them, always say that they love being a heel because it's more easier. It's more, it's more easier for to make the the fans hate you. I think I agree with Gino. Roman Reigns right now is better as a heel. He's better as a heel, but he does, he's probably still trying to figure out transitioning into being a heel because he's been a face for so damn long. It's hard for him to get out of that whole old routine of being a face. But so far, he's been doing good, and uh, a lot of people love him. He's been getting a lot of good compliments and opinions from other people. But my, I always liked Roman Reigns. He just lacked in a lot of stuff. And now I see the progress he's learning. He's still not there. He's still not 100%, but he's getting there. I like Roman Reigns. Well, sucker and sucker tash. Well, I gotta, <laughs> I, I gotta be the uh, the imbalanced testicular in this one because <laughs> um, basically, I, I wanna, I, I just wanna express what I think about Roman Reigns, and that's what I see him as a testicular, an imbalanced testicular. You know, where sometimes you got the macho, but then you got the other side that's just like, <laughs> you know, that little freaking man pussy that just doesn't want to come out. That's what Roman Reigns is. Um, yes, he has improved with a heel turn. But the problem that I see with Roman Reigns is that he breaks character a lot. And you sometimes see him smirking. And at times, you don't see the confidence when he's talking to the damn people. It's like when he's acting tough, he talks, but then he catches himself. So he feels kind of like embarrassed or he doesn't feel that he's that tough guy, the tribal chief that he's claiming to be. And that fucking irks me a lot because it's like, okay, you get us in the zone and then you let it go because you break character and you don't feel and have the confidence of the person that you're portraying right now as we speak. The tribal chief, a person, a warrior with confidence. I think, I think his best promo so far that I've seen was the promo that he did uh, before the WrestleMania match between him, 
Edge and Daniel Bryan. I think that was like his best promo because he went after each one of them. He didn't stumble on his words like he usually do. He didn't stumble and he, he kept a straight face through the whole thing. I think that was his best promo. In my opinion, that was his best promo. One thing I like about about Roman Reigns, honestly, is um he has a of course we all know he has a good presence. He, he has a good look or whatever. Um but one thing I did notice, one thing I did notice with him, his best work comes out when it's when his back is against the wall against somebody he wants to prove himself against. Like for instance, I don't know if you remember that, that's exactly where I was heading. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly where I was heading. Um Cena kind of exposed him, you know. Yep. But Roman, Roman actually had his back against the wall and he came out of that situation okay. Even though yeah. I thought he lost against Cena in that in that instance, but he Definitely. didn't he didn't bow down and just tuck his head and dip. He actually stood there and went yeah. toe to toe with somebody like that. You know, that's when he, that's when you bring out his best. When you put somebody lie. It's, in front it's of him. It's very hard to go against Cena. When you look in the ring going, you know, on the mic. It's very hard to go against Cena. The Cena is very great on the mic. Yes. The mic, the mic is going on. Uh, and look and at, look at what I'm talking about. And CM, and CM Punk. Punk also. These are all great mic men. Yeah. All of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Roman Roman is great when he wants to prove himself to those kind of people. Yeah. You see I how agree. you said that's his best work. His best work was um cutting that promo on Edge and mm -hmm. Daniel Bryan. Look at look at the caliber of, of guys he stepped in the ring with. Yeah. Daniel Bryan is is Edge. a super technician. Edge is a Hall of Famer. You know what I'm saying? These guys are like worthy opponents. Why Man, wouldn't Edge. Roman want to come out? Roman is not gonna <laughs> he's not gonna prove himself against somebody like you know, like uh Xavier Woods or some shit like that. He's gonna treat it like it's regular, like a like an everyday thing. Yeah. The promos that Edge cut, the promos that Edge cut um for that match was like phenomenal. Uh -huh, yeah. So Roman Reigns had no <laughs> choice but to try and top it, which he didn't, but he did a he had a, a good effort. He did really good to me. And he had to match Edge's promos. And yeah, that Edge promo. Oh my my fault. Go ahead. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's it's okay. Go, go, go. Finish up. Uh, okay, okay. Okay, yeah. That edge promo, that edge promo. Um the one that I think you're talking about is the one that he transitioned back to the rated R superstar. Which one? The that one that he was inside the ring? He was in the ring, yes. He was in the ring by Sitting himself. down? Yeah, and then he went yeah. and started to go crazy. And then I, he's like, I think oh. that one was great. But I think the one with him and Paul Heyman was even better. Oh, yeah, that one was a good one, too. That one was just, like, <laughs> I mm -hmm. felt when, you know, you come on the TV and you're like, damn, what the hell? Like, that mm -hmm. was a great promo that he cut. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he has his, he has his moments. And uh, he has his, uh, how will you say, his potential, the, the skills that, you know, we, we notice because, you know, he's there for a reason. Roman needs to, I don't know, go to some boot camp or something to basically work on his talking skills and, and, and really, really believe who he is at the moment. That's how I see it. Yes, he could perform in the ring. He could freaking do his little Superman punches and all the little spears he wants. You know, he can look the part too. Anybody can look the part. But being the part and believing the part is a whole big damn story. That's something different. Yeah, I would say I would say lastly. I, I mean, lastly, I like him as a champion. I mean, 
<laughs> I just don't like his voice. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I've I've said that plenty of times. I just it's just like his believability is great because he got such a presence and he's built like a fucking a tree. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, like, bro, like, I don't believe you when you talk. It's like it was kind of like he had he has the Mike Tyson feel for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mike Tyson was super dangerous. But at the same time, when he got on the microphone, it was just like, <laughs> bro, are you ser- do you seriously talk like this? Yeah, yeah. but um, Lashley, Lashley's a great champion to me, but I think they got him in weird story in a weird storyline because they, they got him in limbo. And two, um, he is it, just when he speaks. This, those are only two problems I have with him. Other than that, he's, he's a good champion. He's believable in the sense that I know that Bobby Lashley could fuck somebody up for real. Excuse my language. I don't know if we could curse here. Uh, or not. Yeah, 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 you're good. You're good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he could beat somebody down for real, you know. But um, other than that, I mean, it's all, he's okay to me. Yeah. Me, I mean, I don't. Lashley, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't see it. I don't personally see it. Like, I just don't, I don't know. I can't get into his character. I can't, I don't feel, I don't feel his character. I really don't. I don't see, I don't know. I think he could be better. He could be better. And I agree with Gina. I don't like his voice either. I don't feel, (laughs) I don't feel his promos. (laughs) That's why MVP's probably MVP's talking for him mostly, but I don't know. I don't feel his promos like that. I don't feel him as a wrestler like that either. So, so you basically just don't like him at all. I like him, but like I said, he to me personally, he needs improvement. Was is something missing? I just don't know what. To me, something is missing. I think basically with Lashley and an MVP, I think they should have just kept the Hurt Business together. I think the group balanced out all the weaknesses that they all had, you know, as a whole. Mm-hmm. And they made, themselves, they made themselves stronger as a group, you know, all of them having their lack of, but yet together they look as a threat. They look as more believable. And... You don't see so much nonsense with, you know, like how you guys explain with Bobby Lashley, like the in-betweens and how he's talking and how he's expressing himself. And it just sounds like, you know, like somebody's just strangling somebody's throat. And, you know, and to, go, to go back to what you were saying about the whole, the hurt business, I agree with that. They should have gave that run, that faction a, a longer run. Because I haven't seen, I haven't seen an African-American faction since what nation, nation of domination exactly nation of domination or, or, or the new day or, or the uh, new day but i don't really see them as a faction i just see them as a tag team i they have like a my, real big faction i have my opinion about new day so i might get some controversy from all the freaking damn gummy bear you know freaking marshmallow ass fans out there but new day, yeah uh, you i gotta hear this yeah. Uh, uh, so, so you want to hear it? Okay. No, so, I, I, I definitely want to hear it. I, I just guess. I mean, we could, we could ju- we could jump to that, and we could jump back to these champions. <laughs> uh, they should have gave the her business a longer run. Okay. A longer run. Okay. Yeah, her business. Her business should have had a longer run, and they should have, you know, been in a streak. It's basically like you know, take control, look like a threat. And just make it seem like nobody can beat them, or you know, it looks like you know they just unstoppable. That type like of thing. evolution, just like mm-hmm. evolution. Yeah, yeah. Or, evolution. You know, yeah, evolution was great. Yeah, but they didn't do that. Why? Because there's an African American group, and, and and I don't want to bring in the racial thing, but that's my problem with New Day. Now, New Day as a group, I think I would jerk my balls off on the freaking the whole concept of it. Because I, I, I just don't get it. I don't get it at all. Now, the three people, you know, Xavier Woods, 
You got Coffee Kingston, and then you got Big E. Now, Big E, let's start Big E. By himself, he's a better athlete. By himself, he could be something bigger. But no, they keep him in this freaking group of clowns, because that's what they are, a group of clowns. You know, trust me, I know, as you can see. But you you, you get these freaking now, <laughs> you get these guys, and they all freaking jumping around, they doing all this little freaking damn funny business crap or whatever. Yeah, it's nice for the kids, but all it is is a bunch of clowns for the money, the merchandise. That's what it is. It makes yep. money. So they will sell their cells, yep. sell their cells so that it can basically do what they gotta do. But I know it's not their fault because now there ain't no flexibility in the business. There ain't no, you know, creative, you know, flexibility where you could basically do what you want or at least try and, and it goes through. No, now is your restraint to whatever crap that Vince, we're gonna throw you in here. Vince throws in stuff and, and thinks, okay, no, wait, this is making money. So we're gonna keep these clowns jumping around and dancing around like uh -huh. a bunch of idiots until it goes broke. Because if it keeps making money, they're going to stay doing it. But now you got the Hurt Business. You know, Vince has a hard-on for the brolic. You know it. He likes the big arms. He likes the big pecs. And he likes the big pack. And I'm not talking about the midsection. Now, we're going to go back to the story. We're going to go back yeah. to the story. Where he thinks, wait a minute. Bobby Lashley's begging Brolic. All I need is for him to be with MVP. So the only intelligent thing Vince did was, since Bobby Lashley can't talk, he's an idiot. You put MVP with him. <laughs> he can talk. So now you got the big pack midsection, if he doesn't click up in here. And you got MVP that got the vocals. And there you go. You got the, the nice recipe. But then you see Shelton Benjamin. And Cedric, you know, Vince doesn't like them. Vince doesn't need them. So basically, breaks them up and they're freaking them lost in the shuffle. If you scumbags enjoyed what you watch, hit that like button and make sure that you subscribe so that you get all of this heavenly glory. And oh, and remember that the truth is rich.